the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Let us receive tonight the ministry of my brother, all the way from Zaria, Apostle Joshua Selma. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please walk to three or five people. Tell them good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. I'm aware you've made so many sacrifices. Well done. Give them a big hug. Because tonight is very serious. Appreciate them first before we get into the business of the night. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pastor, thank you again. And your dear wife, I appreciate you. Um, can I just respond to Pastor Dele's Pastor Dele's question on time? We'll pray. But let's just, since it was an issue that he just brought up. Now, God does not dwell Please just stand to get it. God does not dwell. There are different dimensions of living. Time is the lowest. Are we together? The next dimension after time is called eternity. Eternity. People say God dwells in eternity. Well, it's not exactly true. Because eternity is also time. It's just in another dimension. Eternity just means the summation of infinite dispensations. You see that? And then there is a realm where no man can describe. That's where God dwells. It's called a realm of unapproachable light. You see that? Now, so time was a borrowed strategy that was employed here to help men. Please listen. Okay, I know there's a lot going on there. Um, let's, let's just take it easy. With, oh, they can't hear. Okay, that's all right. You don't have to shout. I'm sure a few people will come to help you out there. In Jesus' name. Mm. Are we together? Now, please listen. Listen. We are going to pray. We have a lot to do this night. Um, the fact that God planted us in time. Please listen. There are certain possibilities that can never happen until you are in time. One of it is mercy. I'm trying to answer our question now. You cannot be shown mercy until you are in time. That's why Satan cannot be forgiven. That's why the angels that left their original estate, like Vashti, can no longer return. Are we, are we together now? And God designed the system. You see, this, this chronological counting of time, 24 hours, is not an invention of science. God tied this factor called his mercy to every day so that it recycles his mercies are new every morning. It's a system. Now, listen very carefully. I'm trying to respond to Pastor Daly. So if I get born again at age 40 and my destiny is to be a prophet to the nations, I should spend at least, if we use Jesus as the pattern man, right? At age 12, he was already studying. And for 18 years, there was silence in his life until age 30. So if we are to use that degree of time to learn, I'm already 40, for instance. 
Are you seeing that now? It means that my life, if I'm to study everything in detail, then I may not have enough time. So God introduced the things we call systems of advantage. They are scattered in the believer's journey. God in his predeterminate counsel weighed man and saw that man on his own strength has too many limitations. And the ideal picture of his blueprint will never be attained if unassisted. So God interjected the journey of man with many tokens of advantage. I will list them for you. I'm just trying to answer this question. One, mercy. Two, favor. All of these things are systems that compress time. That means if a woman who has been barren for six years, even if that woman is now healed, if she's to give birth according to the sequence, the order of life, it's going to be nine months, then you may space for two or three years to rest. Are you seeing that now? So she has to spend an extra nine years. So God gives her triplets. It's not just a child. It's a message that he has compressed nine years in one year. There are different systems of time redemption. You don't redeem time by um, doing anything about it in terms of stopping it from moving. No. There are things you introduce. Are we together now? It's very important. One of the tokens of advantage over time is the power of prophecy. Now listen very carefully. You see, the realm of the spirit is like if you know a movie director. We have not started tonight's lecture. I'm just responding to what, what, listen, listen. Please listen. Now, now listen very carefully. The realm of the spirit is like a script. But no time is attached to them. Are we together? Scripts of possibilities that reflect the will of God and his counsel. But no time is attached to them. It is part of the ministry of the prophetic to allocate the timings for their manifestation. That means if I have been delayed so that what should happen to me 10 years was delayed, the prophetic can reach out and shift that scene to my future to make it happen. So the Bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. These are systems of advantage. It is on this strength that the Bible, Paul speaking by the intelligence of the spirit, he said, for we know that all things, in other words, no matter what your disadvantage is. In fact, I'm teaching what I taught yesterday, really. I taught a little of this uh, at home before I came. That means if I lose my father and my mother, according to the progression of human existence, I'm already disadvantaged. There is something they represent that cannot be easily replaced. So I will have to search by the intelligence of the spirit what system of advantage has been provided to remedy these kinds of constraint. There has to be something in God's economy that can play the role of a father. So when we say receive favor, most of us who teach it do not teach it connected to an eternal purpose. We just isolate it as if it's just for you to prosper. So the richness of what it provides, we cannot know why, to what end. When I'm, when I'm praying for a woman to have a child, I'm more concerned about validating my call than connecting her to something that is higher and greater than the ego of a man. You see where the problem is? Yes. They are called systems of advantage. This is why in a meeting like this, the Holy Spirit comes not only to bless people, but when the atmosphere is set, one of the things he does is you have to reach out to people and find the various constraints in their lives and supply different dimensions that can help accelerate them. So it's possible that we're seated here and while you are listening to the word, you are supposed to be doing something that will move your life. He's not an irresponsible person. He knows you should be in your shop now. 
and he knows that your sales of this night should at least be 100,000. So you are sacrificing 100,000 to hear him. There is a system in his economy that will make what you will get tomorrow a million. And he tells you, you see, the justice of God has played out. So you never feel afraid when you are in his presence because you know that when you are in his presence, the more you wait, you run faster. It's a technology in the spirit that every time you want to run, the secret is to wait on the Lord. Was it not said that they that wait upon the Lord, they will what? Mount up with wings. We have systems of advantage. The one who designed this system is intelligent enough. He factored the limitations of this entity called man. Are we together? Yes. So you don't move around like someone who has been scammed by God. God, I gave you this. I gave you that. And then we must trust God for teaching priests who will expose us to these spiritual arsenals. And then you can stand up and say, though I lost my father, though I lost my mother, I came for this conference and I found out that something in God's economy can play that role. It becomes a system of comfort. It's why the Holy Ghost is called a comforter. You don't comfort people by, that mourn by cleaning their tears. No. If they stole something and you are crying, and I tell you, well, this can solve the same problem. It will comfort you. Praise the Lord. I intended to answer two questions. I answered only one. I can't remember what the other one is. Anyway, good evening, everybody. Praise the Lord. Let's hold hands together and pray. God bless you. Pray in the spirit for tonight. It's a revival series. We are here to obtain wisdom. Prato sapra dis cabra chute que le cato saprende que de balatas. Pradija le cate prendis que de baruticia. There is a making, there is a formation that is happening in us. Alabandas cata pras que de bahashalabas. Jigete prandis e galebariadaba. Ale prende que te paradusi. Croto sopra di gira balara 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 bas. Se paruta sada prende que da patusi alla hascada brus. Remember I told you this is a solemn assembly. You are not praying just for yourself. Kibalandes kaparus kadi hashala bara kudus. Shepratus kadi predi kadi balada balada balada. You reign, you reign, hello King. You reign, you reign, you reign. Hello, King. You reign, you reign. Hello, King. You reign, you reign. Hello, King. Yeah, na 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 na. Na 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 na, yeah, yeah, yeah. Na 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 na, na 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 na, na 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 na. You reign, you reign, and oh.
Let's walk with you, ma'am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit just reminded me of the second thing I was to say. Please listen. Listen, we'll sit down shortly. Two things I said, and while we were singing, the Holy Spirit just reminded me. Remember, the Bible says he will bring to your remembrance. Hallelujah. The second thing I wanted to talk about is, very briefly, let me show you how God transforms men in this kingdom. Transformation is difficult without a reference. I'm just buttressing on what Pastor Dele shared. You cannot become nothing. You cannot change into nothing. There has to be a reference. And the way God does it, please listen very carefully, is that aside from his word, that is a compendium of his methodology. Are we together now? Men are changed when they behold men. Not just words. Are we together now? So what happens is that God in his system, when he's training you, he will personify what he wants you to be in a person and recommend that you understudy that person. So in God's economy, every dimension he wants to reveal, there is a person to represent it. So when he wants to show you what it means to be blessed in the kingdom, Isaiah 51 says, look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that body, for I called him and blessed him and increased him. Are we together now? Yes. When you want to see how to manipulate difficult challenges and thrive, they recommend Isaac to study what happened that Isaac sowed in a land and reap that same year. If you desire an encounter with God, the personality that represents the office of encounter in the Bible is Jacob. Are we together? This is the generation of them that seek thy face. Oh, it's not Jacob. It's God of Jacob. The God of Abraham is not the God of Isaac. It's not the God of Jacob. He is God. But all those dimensions are revelations of different parts of him. What the God of Abraham will give you, the God of Jacob will not give you. No. When you want to know God, he refers you to Jacob. So you have to journey from chapter 28 of Genesis. The first encounter where he missed it. And he got up. So in case you are backslidden and you want to return back, there is hope for you because Jacob missed that encounter. So you find out what he did first. Between the first encounter and the second was the encounter in the house of Laban. There was a level of innocence that Jacob had that did not allow him to know God. So he passed through the house of Laban. And by the time we get to chapter 32, he was ready. He dismissed his wives and his cattle and all of that. And then a man came to him and he held him. He said, this time I won't miss it. I will not let you go. And then you see how God blesses people. That he blesses people by changing their names. So you find out. When you want to understand how to use the ministry of prayer and the prophetic to legislate God's counsel over a territory, the personality that is referred, you are referred to is Elijah. James chapter 5. Are we together? Don't, don't go there. I'm just answering the second question. We'll touch a bit on it, I hope. So the Bible takes us and organizes those men. The Bible calls them elders. And he tells us they obtained a good report. So you now begin to study them. Through faith, Abel offered. There is a kind of offering that would take faith. So when that happens, don't be afraid. Understudy Abel. How he offered a more excellent sacrifice that got to heaven. So if your offering is not bringing returns, go back to Abel. What did Abel do? Because Abel and Cain is a contrast of two givers. And one did not get results. So if your giving life is faulty, there is a personality.
Help us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes by your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Conferences like this are feasts of mysteries. It's amazing how Jesus made his disciples to become apostles. He spent time teaching them every day, every time. Even when he was on the cross, he knew he had not finished the lecture. As soon as he resurrected, they saw him say, there's no time to celebrate me. Let's get to the lecture quickly. I have 40 more days with you and I need to teach you before the Holy Spirit comes. And Acts chapter 1, he spent 40 days teaching them on the matters of the kingdom. After that, he said, fine, you can go. I'm done with you. It is the word of God that not only purifies but enlightens. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want to just continue from where we left off and where I believe that God has been building all through this conference. We're dealing with the matters of revival. We're dealing with the matters of the move of God. Please don't forget, we're dealing with the matters of destiny as far as the program of God is concerned. You will study from scripture and history that many things that were captured in this Bible, um, when you study history, you will know that many other activities on earth were happening concurrently when certain events here were happening. But they didn't have the privilege of getting into this book because they had no attachment to the will of God. Everything that found its way in this book got there because there was a connection between that event and the will of God. So you would notice that the Bible will talk about an entire book as though only one man existed because that was the only person who played a role that was in sync with God's program. Many other things were happening. So if our children would write about these days, they will not write about someone selling food outside necessarily. They will say, and there was a conference. And so, so, so men of God were ministering. And you would think that that's all that was happening in Lagos. Yet there is a lot happening. I was coming down from the lift and we, we made a mistake and I just stepped into a wedding. I just turned and I said, no, 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 this is not... This is not for me this night. I'm not invited. I refuse to be invited. I have a program. So there's someone is happy now. He just got a wife today. And if you are to record the move of God in 2019 in Lagos, you'll be surprised that God is only interested in how that wedding will produce his agenda. If he cannot find a place in that wedding, it is not worthy of capture into his program. Everything you see in the Bible, it is with respect to how it plays a role. That means ministry. If you're a man of God here, let me define ministry for you. Ministry is whatever comes out of you in honor and in support of God's program. Your pregnancy can become ministry if that child will be a prophet to the nations. So your assignment and your ministry can be to give birth. What was Mary's assignment? Your assignment can be to make money. Now, but this time around, it will not just be maybe, you know, you are just trying to... No, 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 no. You have found a place that you are in the similitude of Joseph of Arimathea and that your wealth has a role to play. The body of the son of the living God was hanging on the cross. No prayer warrior could bring it down. It took a man of wealth and influence called Joseph of Arimathea to bring that body down. So God can make you a Joseph of Arimathea. That means if you sit down and you are just reading books and you are not making money, you are defaulting against your destiny with respect to your assignment. And if you make money and you make it small, you are still defaulting. Because the nature of your assignment has a threshold. Remember, this is not, for you, it's not luxury. It's a ministry. So you are not at liberty to say, I'm, I have enough. No. 
until the one who sent you said, this is enough. The same way a man of God cannot say, I know so much, I won't grow. is a ministry. In ministry, when you move, only God says stop. When it does not say stop, you don't stop, even when there are mountains. His voice is the regulator of the journey. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So tonight, I want us to just delve a little into revival. One of the, one of the ways that I've adopted as I teach believers is to be able to show you the applicability of a revelation. I believe that the edge in getting truth is to know how to apply it in your life. The mere exegesis of the information, as exciting as it can be, does not leave you at an advantage. There must be the point of application. Are we together now? Yes. So as I teach, I have in mind that the mysteries of the kingdom are useless if they just come as information. The applicability of those truths must be given to you. That's where your edge is in that knowledge. So I'm not, only, I'm not only concerned or excited about the unveiling of mysteries. We need to be able to connect those mysteries to the context of our civilization and how you can walk out tonight holding that truth. If we don't achieve that, we may clap for ourselves for getting so deep, but the truth is that we're not going to have any results. It's very painful how powerful meetings end without transformation. It's very painful how in one or two weeks, many people forget. It doesn't matter how they cry during the meeting. Think of how many meetings you've been in your life. Think of the last one that you believe that no other meeting can be greater than that. And you've even forgotten who he preached, not even to talk of what was said. There is a psychology in mentorship. It's not only spirituality. You have to understand man, not just as a spirit. You must understand the psychological component and how men receive truth. Are we together? Yes. It is part of the requirements to be an effective minister. A minister is first a communicator. It is the information he communicates that makes him superior. That means that while you, you lean on the strength of the Holy Spirit and the strength of the quality of your information, you must be fair enough to your listeners to go so far to understand how humans learn. Are we together? These are some of the auxiliary systems that help men of God to be very effective so that we don't waste our time dispensing truths that are not translated with a level of mastery that can cause the hearers to hear. The name of what I just defined for you is what the Bible calls utterance. There is a difference between utterance and oratory. Oratory is the ability to communicate words intelligently, grammatically, linguistically. But utterance or oratory now, utterance is the ability to translate spiritual truth are we together? And minister it in a way and manner that regardless of the spiritual level and regardless of the intellectual level, there is a system of getting that truth into you. It's a grace. It's called utterance. Hallelujah. Ordinances of revival. That's my topic tonight. Ordinances of revival hmm. tonight's teaching will truly set you on fire and it will help us to not only be spiritual but to ensure that our territories you see kingdom advance is territorial you are not free if you are the only one who is changed the value system of the kingdom must translate from you and be reflected within your territory so even our assignment is territorial. Are we together now? We have to graduate from the realm of individual transformation as good as it is. The systems and the structures will never come to the obedience of Christ when the transformation remains within us. There has to be a system of extending it. 
This is where I think there is a lot of problem when we teach on revival, the move of God. We isolate the environment, the cosmos, and act as though it should not be involved in the process. It's a waste of time when your territory does not subscribe to your values. Praise the Lord. Ordinances of revival. Hmm. I can see with the eyes of the Spirit and I hear the sound of an army rising and I know they're rising in their thousands they're coming from afar they're coming from afar. Hey, 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 hey. Tonight is a kingdom anthem, like we have a national anthem. Young ancients, young ancients arise. Young ancients, young ancients move forward. Young ancients, the spirit of the Lord with you. The power of Yeshua goes with you wherever you go. Oh 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 Hallelujah. Tonight I'm ministering, please sit down, in the spirit of Elijah. Elijah is not a man. Elijah is a spiritual system that foreruns the move of God. The first manifestation of Elijah was in Noah. Praise the Lord. It is an ordinance that before the Lord comes, Elijah must forerun him. There was a personality who carried that office called Elijah. But Elijah is not a man. Just like Jezebel is not a man. There are systems. It's only that systems enter time by entering men. So all that you see in the Bible... Is a continuation of the same story using different actors through different dispensations. Every time you see the move of God about to come, watch out for Elijah. Elijah is a manifestation of the prophetic and the apostolic and the assignment of Elijah is to bring back the ordinances of God. Are we together now? When the ordinances of God are put in place, then the Lord can come. So when it was time for the prophets of Baal to be judged, Elijah the Tishbite shows up. Are we together now? And then Malachi tells us before the great and the terrible day of the Lord, Elijah will come. It's an ordinance. Are we together now? Yes. So when Jesus was about to come, Elijah comes again in the person we call John the Baptist. Did the Bible not say he came in the spirit and power of Elijah? 
John the Baptist came to forerun him because it is an ordinance. Please just follow me tonight. The same way, listen very carefully. When Jesus came and Elijah came, Jezebel had to find a way to also be represented. And she was represented in a small lady who married a king. And the same way she vowed to remove the head of Elijah, she removed the head of John. Like she promised. Hallelujah. So what you see on earth are not just bodies. They are continuation of a story. Are we together? Please write this down. An ordinance is a precept. An ordinance is an accredited methodology. An ordinance is a precept. An ordinance is an accredited methodology. An ordinance is an, is an authorized approach. So when we say the ordinances of revival, we are talking about the systems that have been allocated by which individuals, families, and territories can activate and preserve the move of God within the lifetime of a dispensation. You have to know this. If this is not discussed, we failed in this conference. You have to talk about the subject of revival. Here and there... We've read books about the moves of God. Like, let, me, let me talk for five minutes about the move of God. There are two dimensions of the move of God. We're discussing revival tonight. Are we still together? The first dimension of the move of God is called the cyclical move of God. From the word circle, the cyclical move of God. That means... These moves have similarity. There is a repeatability in their operation. Are we together now? It is these kinds of moves that you will need a father figure for. Because you can take the advantage of history and age plays a lot here. The cyclical move of God. Moving again as he did before. So when you meet a man that has done business with God for many years, he can read the writings on the wall and tell you, I know this move. When I was 17 years, this was how the formation of the revival started. And now I see that same formation. So he can guide you. An example of such a move and such an advantage was Eli and Samuel. Although the eyes of Eli was becoming dim, which is a dangerous state spiritually, but he still had an advantage of the understanding this move. The moment he saw a young boy coming and said, sir, you called me. It's amazing that God used the voice of Eli to call Samuel. He didn't say, I had the voice of him. Mm -mm, I came to you. It was the sound of your voice God used. And when he came the second time, Eli said, ah, this is familiar. I know this. The next time he calls, say, speak, Lord. Because until you respond, he cannot continue. I, he will not violate your will. Remember that God lures men. Oh, dear. Help me, Holy Spirit. I don't want to delve and talk about so many things now. The way God lures men into dimensions, you see, is to come to you. He knows your spiritual hunger and appetite. So he will manifest something about him that reflects your hunger and hide it back. The moment that happens, it will draw you to want to find out. So as a man of God, you are trusting God for a prophetic grace, for instance. Now, you will come for a meeting and it's like it will be hazy. You'll be hearing Janet and say, ah, should I embarrass myself or not? Who is Janet? I'm the one. Are you five in your... We are five. You see, you are happy. And then the next meeting, you will try it again. And it will not work. It is not backsliding. He's luring you. <laughs> Dimensions in the spirit cannot only be believed. They can be tasted. Oh, taste and see. 
I've always used this example. Let me use it again. I come from the north, and I, many of you have them here, right? That these people that sell meat. Yes. They never allow you buy it. They allow you taste it first. Because they know that the awareness of what is in your pocket will, 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 will shortchange their desire to extract more money from you. They know how to manipulate what is in your pocket. So they'll say, don't worry, there's no pressure. You can even go if you want to. They will dare you. And so you plan to spend 1,000 naira and your wife is standing there with you. And then they just, you taste one, ah, what of this one? This one is like it has too much fat. They will bring out another one and say, there's this one doesn't have fat. You end up spending 5,000 naira there unplanned for. When God is about to call Moses, Moses sees a bush burning, but not consumed. And the, the bush continued there. It was God luring him. He said, I will turn aside and see this great sight. The moment he turned aside, he said, finally, I've got it. That's all. The morale for all this was to get your attention. Let me tell you this. It is hard to get man's attention. The distraction that is upon mankind cannot allow us to focus on God and understand. God is very excited when he finally gets man's attention. He doesn't hide it. You see his excitement. That's why when God is trying to use a man and you come to distract that man, God will say, you don't know what I went through to get this guy to now pay attention. You better not be a distraction. There are many skills that the Spirit of God can employ to get men's attention. He can relocate men. He can go as far as making you lose your job. And it doesn't matter in his economy because restoration is still possible. So it's only you that knows you are at a loss. In the economy of God, it doesn't make any difference. Because six months later, you can be back to what you would have been. So you are the only one who is feeling it as a loss. But I mean, the realm of the spirit is looking at you and saying, what is this guy saying? So God can be at liberty and comfortable to let you lose your job. Because you think that if that job does not come, the salary of five months, and God is saying, look, there are weightier matters. This is not the issue of the job. It's the reason why when you are scared and pray some prayers, God just overlooks it and says, let's deal with the major issues. There is already a provision to tell you sorry later. Hallelujah. You really have to pray for me this night because I can't even remember how I got to where. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we have the cyclical move of God. Are we together now? Yes. If a campus now, campus presidents here, you can come and meet Pastor Dele and say, we are seeing a formation in our campus. Something is beginning to happen. People are just shouting under the anointing in the hostel. And on the strength of the experience of having passed through that move, everybody who was involved in any campus move of God will smile and say, we know these writings. We know what it means. A young guy will just come and tell you, as soon as I finish lecture, something keeps driving me to the bush. You laugh. You say, I can interpret it. That one is easy. No, that one, I've been trained. It's not word of knowledge. An experience. There is something about the bush and God building people. The bush doesn't have to burn. You just go there. Because it can get your attention. Are we together now? So you can advise the people. Now, but listen. But there are certain moves of God. The second dimension of the move of God. It is not cyclical. No one has seen it. These are moves that are prophetic. For instance, the coming revival 
that is coming that we are prophesying is in the similitude of this move. There is no man that can give a clue about it. The character of the revival left even our fathers with dots. They said we stretch our eyes. We don't know. We just know that something will happen. You have to trust God real time. The only spirit of God or the only spirit that can help and guide men is the Holy Spirit. That's the kind of move where both the young and old will have to stand helpless. Waiting for God to define the terms of that move. So he says, blow the trumpet in Zion. He says, sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. Then he begins to describe the formation of this army. Not every move of God can be predicted. It will not be like before. This is where the limitation of knowing the God of yesterday comes. Because the last move of God always fights the next move of God. Just because God is doing something now, the way he, or the way, just because God is not doing something now, the way he did it 10 years ago, does not mean he's not the one doing it. This is the trouble with boxing God to a cyclical move alone. When you study God's generals, many of you here have studied God's generals, right? There was this man, let me, let me, since we're discussing revival, let's honor, we have to, it's like a manual. This is a textbook on revival. You are not a serious student of revival if you don't know the book or have not read the book or don't have it. You have to ask God and those men for forgiveness because they are still alive. The labors of our heroes past shall not be in vain. So you have to at least honor them. Are we together now? So, there was a man called Alexander Towe. Now, those days, you didn't have internet and you didn't have phones. So if I were in Zaria here, I would not know that God was moving in Lagos. So it would be safe to assume I'm the only one who is capturing these dimensions of God. Are you, are you getting the problem now? Alexander Doe was a mighty, mighty, mighty man of God. People say they are evangelists. He was not an evangelist. Praise the Lord. He became the spiritual mayor of Illinois. It was him that built Zion City as an attempt to conquer the cosmos. He didn't get the blueprint properly. But at least it was an attempt. He was the first person to start what we now do, our fathers do, like campgrounds, and to have a place like this. It was Alexander the Way. Are we together now? Where you have a territory that is secluded with hospitals and this that reflects the value system of heaven. The Way was so powerful that he mentored the mayors and he mentored all of these people. He came to a time where every time people read the Bible, the man they saw was the way. And they said, Alexander, the way you are Elijah. For a while he said, no, 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 how can I be Elijah? But one day, he thought about it and said, ah, it may be true that I'm Elijah. And by the next week, the way was in a priestly regalia. Are we together now? Now, that's not even where I'm going to. Later on, when his ministry was about coming to an end, people came from another region and rumored a strange move that had started. This is what I want to communicate to you. And they said that move was headed by a woman huh, called Maria Woodward Eater. Now, listen very carefully. That this woman... Number one, that she was a woman. Two, she was uneducated. Number three, she did not. I mean, this guy said, because the, the nature of his teaching captured God and said, I am the reference of anything God. It's a dangerous lesson. So Alexander Dewey 
started hearing and tried to find out more what was the nature of this move it was maria woodward eater that introduced something that we call presence evangelism that means that people are slain under the power but not like it happens to us now it was a strange phenomenon because they would not only fall they would freeze as though dead in that position for many hours I remember those days when God started with us on campus. It was like that. People would just lie down as though dead for hours. And you who is the prayer warrior that initiated that trouble, you keep praying that they wake up. Because if for any reason, they don't wake up. While it is true, you are anointed, you have a situation you must manage intelligently. You are building that person, but they have parents. Are we together? Now watch this. When Alexander Dewey heard what God was doing with Maria Woodward Eater, he was not even patient to study it. He compared the move with his experience. And when he saw that there was a significant difference, he said, number one, this woman was of the devil. Her operation was of the devil. And he used his credibility to try to discourage her. So here and there, people who came from Doe's meetings to her meetings, they were not there to receive. They were there to cause a lot of trouble. And they manipulate people, including the first husband, Woodward, who made life very difficult for her. It was while Woodward frustrated her to a point that while she would be preaching, he would be having an affair with one lady. Eventually, Woodward died and she was the one who conducted his funeral. Then a few years later, she married the man they call Ita, who now was her second husband, who was a great support and helped her. Are we together now? Yes. So we see that a man was fighting the move of God. And when you study down through history, what we call denominations, now I'm not, I'm not, I'm not um, talking against any denomination, but Almost every denomination, mainstream denomination, was a persecuted version of the previous denomination. You have to be students of history if you want to study the move of God. Now, a generation is full of very proud people who just believe they are in ministry, they are in this, and they would not sit down to learn. The persecuted version of different ministries is what kept bringing forth certain ministries and the factor responsible for the persecution was an introduction to a new dimension of God every time a new dimension of God was introduced that was not captured in the prior move they fought it please you have to understand this because this revival we are shouting about is going to come with side effects and you must be trained to understand the side effects it will not be the way it has been. Many people will call what is of God the devils because it does not conform to the mold of religion. Because it does not conform to the mold of certain things. Once upon a time, if someone fell under the anointing, you will call a doctor. You don't say, oh, praise Jesus, he's growing. No. It took time. And those who pioneered that dimension suffered a great deal. They were persecuted. They turned them into all kinds of things. The move of God on campus today is now received. But those who God started using, they suffered. Oh. They were blackmailed. They were told to be destroying people, destroying students, not helping people study. Look, let me. there is a price to host the move of God. There is a level of study. Amina, you must sustain to host God. The weight of God is very heavy. You have to be strong to be able to carry him. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny.
Salas kade baska na kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto breka teke ne kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. 